guys, it's Jolene here and Finch is here with me too. Hi guys! So today I'm going to talk about 10 of the easiest house plants for beginner plant parents to decorate their homes. The first one I'm going to talk about is cacti and succulent. You could never go wrong with cacti and succulents. Just don't love them too much and smother them with water and you'll be good. Put them on your window sill, they love bright sunlight and they will thrive for you. I have an aloe vera. This guy grows really quickly and it doesn't need anything from me. I water this guy about once a week or even once every two weeks and it's just really happy and it has really great medical purpose if you have burn you have pimples you can just cut a tip and, and apply it on your skin and i have this little old man cactus over here i also don't give it any tlc all i do is water it once every two weeks and it's growing trust me it's growing even though it doesn't look like it's doing anything the next plant i want to talk about could you guess it it's a a snake plant! Snake plant, also called Sansevieria or mother-in-law's tongue. They are such easy growers and they also purify the air very, very efficiently. These guys truly thrive on neglect. It's perfect for frequent travelers who can't be home all the time or have to stay on the road for extended periods of time. And you don't have to ever worry about this guy because guess what? You can water them once a week, once every two weeks, or even once a month. But it really depends on where you're located. I get these guys from the website called The People's Plants. They are wealth and sensitive areas. I plant them in a little pot together like this because I just love the shape of it and I think they look like bunny ears. <laughs> I got these guys for um, about $35 each and they survived the mail and I just received them in perfect condition. And the third one I want to talk about is Syngonium. Syngoniums are very easy houseplants to take care of. They do really well in uh, medium to low light, but they thrive in bright indirect sunlight. During spring and summertime, you could keep the soil lightly moist. Uh, all the time but during winter and fall it's recommended that you let the soil kind of dry out a little bit between watering the one i have here is i think it's called actually let me check it's called syngonium red regina i got this guy from pasadena uh, armstrong garden center i got this guy for like five dollars it's really cheap and i was so excited to get this one because i love love the pink variation of this uh, type of syngonium i just keep it about uh, a foot away from my window my south facing window and it really thrives for me and i get about average five new leaves per month it's just amazing. Fourth one I want to talk about is rubber plant. Botanical name for this type of rubber plant is called Ficus elastica. And you might know also Ficus tenaki and Ficus strawberry with different variations. Um, this is one of my favorite Ficus plant. This guy I have has deep, deep green leaves and red stems on the back of the leaves which I just so obsessed with and this guy is so easy to grow if you have patience you can start out with a starter plant like the one I have a small one and it takes a few years to grow a couple feet tall and as long as you keep uh, upgrading it to a bigger pot then you will have a huge tray in a couple years it's recommended that you start with a smaller plant if you want to keep it indoor because if you start with a more mature plant with kind of like a taller tree then it's kind of harder for it to adapt to indoor lifestyle 
For this guy, the soil is recommended to keep moist during growing season, during summer and spring, and during winter time or fall. Uh, it likes to also dry out between watering. If you water this guy too much, the leaves are gonna turn yellow and the lower leaves gonna fall off. But if you don't water it too much, the lower leaf might also fall off and the stems might get leggy. So it's kind of tricky to know: am I overwatering? Am I underwatering? So it would be nice if you keep a schedule and keep track of how much you water this guy and for lighting requirement this guy loves bright sunlight but no direct sunlight if it gets bright sunlight it will thrive for you but it, if it doesn't then you will realize the stems are starting to get like soft and leggy and also the leaves gonna lose its luster and for those of you who watched my live before you know where did I get this guy I got this guy from Trader Joe's and how much was it this goes five dollar isn't that crazy i got this about a couple of weeks ago less than a month ago and i was so excited to see this in trader joe's i would i just have to get it <laughs> and i'm so glad i did okay we're halfway there the fifth one i'm gonna talk about is watermelon peperomia this guy is a very easy house plant and also a very fast grower it's a flowering plant the inflorescence just look like a little sticks let me see if i can find any okay i'm gonna come close to you and see this guy that's inflorescence it's just a little stick during growing season like most of the tropical plants this guy loves to keep it moist uh, all the time but remember don't ever let this guy sit in soggy soil because it's very prone to root rot you don't want that but also if just I will say just to be safe always let the top layer of soil get a little bit dry before you water it for lighting requirements this guy does really well uh, at bright to medium light I put this guy probably about uh, one foot away from a south facing window and it's just happy look at the little heads just all oh, towards the sun I'll show you the back of it less pretty view huh? because due to phototropism this guy just grows towards the light reaching for the light also this guy is really easily being propagated i have some of the stem propagation over here i'll show you some of the new stem cuttings i've taken they are already growing some of the small roots and i'll show you another one that's been in water for about i'll say about a month now it's gotten a lot of roots and also two little tiny mini leaves it's so cute because every leaf you got you will be able to make another whole plant okay the sixth one i'm going to talk about is could you guess Lala, it's an elephant ear. This guy is a colocasia. It's a taro plant. You could eat the tuber as well as the leaves. I heard it's delicious when you make them into chips. But I'm not gonna make my baby into chips. Look at how beautiful they are. I've had this guy for about five months, I'll say five months so far. Um, if you asked me four months ago, five months ago, I would say, this is the hardest plant to take care of but the only reason was i didn't know how to take care of it now i'm gonna tell you guys all the new plant moms or plant dads this guy is absolutely so easy as long as you give it enough water it just loves loves to be drenched also if you are very heavy-handed at giving water you just can't stop watering your plants can't stop spraying your plants get this Get this, from one plant parent to another plant parent, water is the only thing this guy needs and it'll just thrive for you. I have many people DM me and ask, why is my leaf keep dying every time one new leaf comes out? Well, don't worry about it because in order to conserve is nutrients and energy for the new growth, the older leaves had to sacrifice. But you know what? Every time a new leaf comes out, it's gonna grow bigger than the previous leaf. 
This is a very new leaf just opened up and this is his mother. But this guy, I, you know what, in about two or three days, this guy is gonna be way bigger than this one. I'm super excited. And also, this guy is such a fast grower. Always remember to upgrade your pot. For lighting requirements, this guy loves bright sunlight but indirect sunlight. Otherwise, these leaves might get burned. I put this uh, about half foot away from my south facing window and they are just really happy. And for plant parents who would love to get one of these guys but you are always traveling, you won't be home often, I recommend you uh, put this guy on self-watering just because this guy needs water constantly. This guy never go a day without water in their saucer. Okay, now we're moving on to the seventh. The seventh plant is Hoya. Hoyas are known for being easy. They're just easy. They're like succulents, but they're not succulents. So they have almost, almost very similar care tips with succulents. Uh, this guy, of course, loves bright sunlight, but I like succulents. They don't like to sit on windowsill. They don't like direct sunlight. If my loose is green, you might see your Hoya start to turn kind of like a whitish. The soil likes succulents. They like well-drained soil. So I water this guy about once a week. I will sit it in water for about 50 minutes and take it out. Let the water drain out to make sure there's no excess water. It's not sitting in water and you're good. The one I have over here is a Hoya Opovara. Uh, some of you might watch my live before. I got this guy from Rainbow in downtown LA. I got this guy on sale. The label says it's $24.99, but I got this for $15. Brought it to my office. I got some cuttings for my coworkers, and I also took some cuttings uh, to propagate. I'm doing two types of propagation over here. One is soil propagating and the one is water propagating so these guys are still trying to root it's been about uh two three weeks now and the leaves aren't turning soft or anything so i have good faith on this guy and over here i have this soil propagated hoyas also, none of the leaves are turning soft, so I think they have great chance to be rooted. I used a miracle Grow all-purpose rooting hormone on them before I stuck them in soil. So wish me luck! Okay, now we have three more left. I'm going to talk about the eighth one. The eighth one is the good old classic spider plant. I've been a plant mom for about six months now and this guy was a very very first batch of plants I've got. Look at this guy! When I just got it, I don't have this many grandchildren. <laughs> I look at it. My mother plant is so pregnant and my grandchildren look so happy. I don't think I need to say too much about this guy. Everybody knows. Everybody knows how easy spider plants are and how easy they can be propagated. Every single baby your plant has can turn into a whole new plant. I water this guy once a week. It really doesn't need much. It just tells you when it needs water because um, the one I have is a curly variety. When it needs water, the, these, all these little beautiful curly hair is just gonna go straight. She's gonna turn straight and the color gonna get not as green as right now. It just kind of turned this pale pastel green color then I know it needs water. So as soon as I water it, within 20 minutes, it's gonna bounce back. It's crazy. That's, that's how easy they are. And for lighting requirements, these guys do well in medium to low light but thrives in bright sunlight like majority of our house plants. So I put this guy about half foot away from my south facing window and I just hung it up on the ceiling because I love the way it trails. For you guys who would love to decorate your home with a hanging plant and also unfortunately don't have that much bright sunlight, I would say this guy is a must get. Okay, now we have two more left and I'm going to move on to the big guys. Can you guess 
the ninth one I'm going to talk about is a Monstera Deliciosa. This guy has been so, so, so popular in the recent years. And you know why? Because look at these gorgeous fenestrations and the speed of growth for this guy is just outrageous. This guy gives me almost one leaf, one new leaf every two weeks. Sometimes one leaf every one, every week. And another really good thing is they're so easy to propagate as long as you see a node. Uh, that means an aerial root is coming out and then you can just cut it below the node and propagate and make another plant or gift it or sell it, whatever you want to do with it. Some people will keep this guy on a totem pole for it to grow upward, but I don't mind it kind of like exploring its way to the side everywhere. I kind of like the wild look of it. You see these two arms are just like going... <laughs> At our house, they collect a lot of dust because they don't get to get rainwashed. So I like to take a, a cloth, piece of cloth and get some water just to kind of wipe the leaves off, uh, wipe, wipe the dust off of the leaves. I also like to spray my plants a lot because majority of the tropical plants, almost all of them love high humidity. So I love to spray my leaves to increase the humidity a little bit. However, uh, the downside is it does leave some water spots on these leaves. So if you don't like the look of it, you can take one part vinegar and nine part water to wipe it off then um, it'll clean the watermarks off. And I put this guy about half foot away from my window. Again, it's a south facing window, so it gets really great uh, bright afternoon sun. And the last one, last but not least, this guy is also a big guy. I have it in my home. It's this guy right next to me. I'm gonna bring it closer. This guy is a golden pothos. Duh! You bet I'm gonna talk about pothos. I would say pothos are almost the same equivalent care level for succulents and cactus. I'll show you guys, kind of, I'll try to get this guy in camera. I have my golden pothos in a climbing moss pole. And uh, you can see the leaves on the top are getting really large just because pothos are also a vine plant so it loves to climb in order to reach for the most optimum sunlight majority of the people majority of the restaurant majority of the hair salon wherever businesses if they're gonna pick one plant only one plant they're gonna pick pothos <laughs> just because they they even thrive in medium to low light. They love well-drained soil. So I say sit in water for 10 to 15 minutes and take it out. And for propagation, you know, find a node. Find an, what a node? Find an aerial root. Every aerial root you find, you cut it right below it. You stuck it in water or put some rooting hormone, shove it in soil. You have another new plant. That's how easy these guys are. Okay guys, that's all the 10 plants I want to talk about. But you know what? I really don't want to put a number on it because every time I'm like, okay, let's talk about next plant. I eye on my other plants. I'm not going to talk about I'm, I'm so sorry. You're, you're a good boy too. I'm so sorry. You're a good girl too. I want to talk about all of them because as long as you gave them right amount of water, right amount of light, then they, they, they're all good, good kids. Thank you guys so much. These are just my experience. I'm really happy I was able to share this with you guys. I hope you learned something. And if you have other thoughts about what houseplants you think are really easy, you want to recommend to beginner plant parents, please feel free to comment below. Thank you so much guys for watching. And please give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe if you haven't. And also don't forget to turn on the notification. Hit that little bell because I go live all the time. Time. Love you all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!